I should mention in, in terms of uh, data is the thing we're developing, our data cloud, which will be used first for sort of the public data that's within Wolfram Alpha, but the data cloud will also be accessible kind of uh, uh, from both sides, from Mathematica and from Wolfram Alpha, and people will be able, there'll be an API for it, people will be able to upload data, for example, from Mathematica to the data cloud, and then be able to uh, refer to their data from within Mathematica, also from within Wolfram Alpha. So it's kind of a, a, a way of bringing together sort of uh, uh, a storage of, of all sorts of data for, for people um, in, uh, in, in this cloud. Well, uh, with Wolfram Alpha, there are lots of um, uh, deployment channels that have started to, uh, uh, to show up. Um, an example that came out um, a little while ago are widgets. It's pretty easy to build a little form on the web. What's traditionally been hard is to make that form actually do something. Now, with Wolfram Alpha, in sort of the back end, it becomes easy to make these forms actually do something, to create widgets that are customized um, and that work on the basis of the computable knowledge in, in Wolfram Alpha. It's kind of a, a sign of, of what I call knowledge-based computing, kind of one's traditional view of computing has been that uh, uh, what, a software, uh, what software is is sort of an empty receptacle into which you have to put all of the data and knowledge that you want to deal with. But now there's this notion of knowledge-based computing, of which Wolfram Alpha is the big example, um, in which there's already sort of the, the knowledge of the world that's built into your computer system, and from there um, you go and, uh, uh, and, and do things. So for example here, let's see, I can go ahead and sign in to the, uh, the widget builder here, um, and uh, oh, look at this. This is, okay, so this is something else which I should mention. This is, this is part of our uniform Wolfram ID system, uh, for all Wolfram technologies and services. Um, this is something that's uh, in Mathematica 8. We have greatly streamlined the way that Mathematica gets installed on different computer systems. We have a general activation scheme uh, for doing that. Um, and this is, uh, this is just one little corner of the, the use of Wolfram IDs. Um, and now, for example, I can create a new widget here. I can go ahead and say um, distance from Boston to, uh, to Chicago, for example. And I start off by just having a, a Wolfram Alpha query that, uh, just some specific Wolfram Alpha query that works. Okay, so there's the result. So now I'm gonna use this query to create a widget. And what I'm gonna do is to uh, highlight the pieces of this that are supposed to be variables, the pieces that are going to be become the input fields in my widget. And now I just go to the next, next page, and now I'm already starting to see my widget being formed on the right-hand side. There's a WYSIWYG kind of thing, so let's say this is city distances, and I make my widget uh, a nice red color, and I can go ahead and edit all these things. Well, let me keep going now. I go on to the next page, and I get here uh, a display of what, what the output from my widget might be like. Now I can go ahead and I can say include only specific parts of that output. Here I can say I want to include this result, the actual distance, let's say I want to include the map as well, and, and those are the only things I want to include. And the other, the other pods of output from Wolfram Alpha I'm going to ignore. Okay, so now there's my widget. I have to decide how my widget will actually operate. Um, but I can go ahead and try this. Let's say Boston to New York. Um, and now I press submit here and I'll see my widget that I just created um, actually operating, and there I see the two, uh, uh, the two output lines that I wanted to get. So now I can go ahead and um, uh, publish this widget. Then I can um, uh, get this widget embedded in a blog, a website, uh, all sorts of other kinds of places. In the future, there will also be Mathematica widgets using the same kind of technology, but instead of just having a pure sort of Wolfram Alpha API call, it will be possible to have a little bit of Mathematica code in, in between the, the, uh, uh, the Wolfram Alpha piece and the final widget so that you can do sort of further customizations of what's happening. Well, another place where we're seeing a lot of deployment of Wolfram Alpha is in mobile devices. This is the Wolfram Alpha app on Android. With, with Android, for example, there's, there's speech input and so on that, uh, that's kind of nice. Uh, one thing that you see here, by the way, is that um, uh, we get to sort of be much more ambitious with the keyboard for the, the, for the thing. So you can just directly enter. Uh, unlike an ordinary keyboard where you have to be using escape, such and such escape, to enter um, a special character on one of these keyboards, you can just type an integral sign because there's a soft integral sign key. Talking of, uh, uh, well, we have, we have lots of interesting things going on on mobile devices. For example, I might, should mention the, um, a spin-off of uh, our company um, named TouchPress, which uh, 
has been uh, publishing, has published Teo's uh, hobby project. Let's see if I can get this to work. So here uh, we've got this nice um, ebook that has uh, all these fun rotating 3D things um, and also uh, uh, well, lots of fun stuff there. Also, of course, it has uh, a built-in Wolfram Alpha capability, so you can go and ask for more detailed technical information and so on from this ebook. An interesting fact about it is that the complete workflow for generating this ebook was written in Mathematica. Um, it's using uh, all of the digital assets are handled in Mathematica, image processing handled in Mathematica, whole thing is assembled in Mathematica. So it's, it's, a, it's yet another example of Mathematica as a development environment being used. So there are lots of things going on, uh, as I say, with Wolfram Alpha and with sort of the linkage between Wolfram Alpha and Mathematica. One, uh, one direction uh, is custom Wolfram Alphas, where we're using Wolfram Alpha appliances, for example, in enterprise settings. Um, to be able, and there's a lot of work been done by our Wolfram Solutions consulting organization to, to do to corporate data what we have done so successfully in Wolfram Alpha with, with public data, um, curating it to the point where it becomes computable and where you can sort of have a Wolfram Alpha experience um, on top of that kind of uh, uh, internal data. I might mention that um, uh, as we think about Wolfram Alpha, it's very important from a practical point of view. It allows us to do all these amazing things with freeform linguistics for, for programming, all those kinds of things. Something that's sort of interesting and perhaps surprising to me is that by thinking in Wolfram Alpha terms, we sort of have a different paradigm for solving some old problems that we've thought about in Mathematica for a long time. So for example, here's a problem that I've uh, long been interested in. The question is uh, sort of how should you do sort of pure mathematics in Mathematica. How should you automate pure mathematics? You know, we've been very successful in Mathematica at automating uh, uh, many kinds of sort of computation, many kinds of what I might call sort of, uh, well, at first based in sort of 19th century mathematics, you know, equations, all these kinds of things. But, but 20th century mathematics, sort of the Bourbaki style of mathematics, uh, it's not been so clear uh, exactly how to automate that. You know, when you're doing kind of uh, Bourbakian sort of very formal mathematics, there are usually places where you need to kind of drop down and actually compute something for real, and those ones Mathematica has been terrific for and has been uh, the sort of the cause of many nice advances in pure mathematics and so on. But when it comes to sort of the, the generic pure mathematics paper that in my kind of version of the world, it usually the first line is something like, you know, let F be a field. Um, that those kinds of very, very sort of pure things where you're sort of describing a mathematical structure, but then, um, then you're not actually computing anything from it. Um, those kinds of things, it hasn't been so clear how to handle those in, a, in, a, in an automated way. So thinking in terms of Wolfram Alpha, we start to understand this. Because what we realize is, let's say you start, let F be a field, and uh, a field with these properties and those properties and those properties, okay? So in Mathematica, we wouldn't know what on earth to do with that. There wouldn't be an obvious sort of output to give when you just, uh, you know, issue the utterance, let F be a field, and so on. But in Wolfram Alpha, there is. Because Wolfram Alpha is used to just trying to tell you interesting things about the thing that you described as the input. So in Wolfram Alpha, in sort of the Wolfram Alpha paradigm, um, one is able to make progress from that. What, and the idea then is to take these mathematical structures that one has described in this way, and then the goal of Wolfram Alpha is not to compute something, it's to try to say something interesting about these structures. So in particular, in sort of some abstract sense, what one would like to be able to do is just say, here are the structures, now tell me the interesting theorems about these structures. Tell me the interesting facts about these structures. Try and automatically synthesize what's interesting about the structure that you've just described. So we started trying to do experiments on this, and we then got into the question of can we curate the three million theorems of mathematics that have been published in the history of, of pure mathematics and so on. Can we get it to the point where we describe all these different types of mathematical structures and their relationships and so on. And this is a project, uh, actually, it's a project that ultimately is, is uh, it's not clear that this is a project that I think is very important from an intellectual point of view and very important for the kind of preservation of the field of pure mathematics it's not clear that it's a terribly commercially interesting project, and, and I hope we're going to be able to uh, uh, collect um, uh, a group of um, uh, mathematicians and funding and so on uh, to sort of uh, embark on this kind of uh, the, 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 I don't know, the, the sort of the arc of mathematics, so to speak, of, of uh, sort of preserving all of, this, uh, all of this kind of knowledge and getting it to the point where it's not just hidden in some paper somewhere, but it's actually something that can be generated in a computable way when people uh, make the, the relevant query. Let me get back to some, some more pragmatic stuff. I want to talk about another important direction for us. 
uh, CDF, uh, our computable document format. Over the years, we built up a, a huge sort of tower of technology um, with, uh, 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 with Mathematica notebooks, and we've created these, uh, I think, very, uh, very nice interactive documents that uh, uh, many of us here use every day. Um, uh, but it's, it's been, um, and we've sort of hoped for, for a long time that the world of kind of publishing would catch up with this technology that we've created for, for making interactive computable documents. Well, I think it's finally time for us to say what we've got is not just something that was set up from Mathematica as Mathematica notebooks, it's a more general kind of thing, and it's relevant to any kind of computable document. Um, and so we can, we can define this general computable document format, which will be a, 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 a public format. The idea is that you author a CDF document, you can use Mathematica in principle, you could use other kinds of tools, we'll be building other kinds of tools to do it too. Um, you author a CDF and then you can deploy your CDF very broadly across all sorts of different uh, kinds of platforms. So for instance, if we go to the... Uh, uh, to the demonstrations project, that will be one place where we can immediately, let's take the very first demonstration that was ever built. Now, this is running inside a web browser, and uh, we can just go ahead and, uh, you know, operate our, our demonstration um, right here inside, inside the frame of a web browser. Let's take the thing that I'm getting out of the web browser, and let's go back to Mathematica here, bring up our drawing tools palette, let me bring up, make a canvas here, let me go ahead and uh, uh, copy that demonstration into that canvas. Okay, now let me go up here, let me go and um, put in some text here, and I can, you know, I'm making something that's a little bit like, uh, let's say, go over here, um, pick that up, make it a little, bit, a little bit smaller. I could go move it over here, for example, let me move this one over. Um, now I can pick this guy up, and let's say I can, um, let's see what it is. Um, Maybe I can put in, um, put some annotation in here. Let me, you know, I don't know, do something like this. Um, and uh, then I, I can really set this up. It's kind of fun. I can set this up, uh, you know, I can just tell it um, uh, to make this full screen and let me get rid of all those guide things. And I've got something that looks kind of a little bit like PowerPoint or something, except it isn't quite PowerPoint because here I can just go ahead and, uh, uh, and start interacting with it. I can start doing computations inside this. So I've got something that kind of is a, is a mixture between, um, that is using CDF and using the Mathematica platform in this case um, to be able to make sort of a, a complete presentation um, uh, with, with, with the system. Back to CDF. Um, and uh, let me just show you one more thing. CDF is not, doesn't have to be, doesn't have to take over the whole screen. Um, this is a CDF that's been embedded in a web browser and it's sort of taking over, this is the, that the, there's a whole, whole frame here. Now, for example, uh, it will be possible in, in Wolfram Alpha to do something like this. I'm now just running Wolfram Alpha. So now this is mostly just a web page, but inside that web page is this region that is CDF. And that CDF region then has all of the uh, modern conveniences of, uh, of an interactive um, thing. And, and for example, I'm sure if I type in something like this, this is you know, it's just a website, but with the CDF plugin, I should be able to get something like this. And instead of getting regular Wolfram Alpha output, I get this thing that has a manipulate inside it, and it's adjustable, and so on. There's sort of a general e-publishing solution that we've been assembling here that goes from Wolfram Alpha widgets that are really easy to create and embed in, in any document to sort of bigger Wolfram Alpha capabilities uh, to CDF and so on. And uh, of course, we try to actually make use of all the technology that we're building. And so for instance, the Mathematica Journal is, is making use now of the whole CDF <coughs> mechanism. Um, so for example, here, and the Mathematica Journal is now being, uh, we've decided to make it a, a freely available journal on, on the web. And now it's, it's using his CDF embedded um, of an article embedded in a, in a web browser and so on, and we can go ahead and interact with it in all, all the usual kinds of ways. Uh, we have a company really at this point that's quite bursting with technology, and you'll see a lot of different directions emerge over the next little while as we try and take all the technology that we have and the, the sort of technology platform that we've built and productize it in a variety of different ways.